So, um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our first speaker today. I'm very pleased to introduce EJ Nambara, and he's come all the way, he's from Toronto. <coughs> he um, focuses on how plants utilize water and nutrients, and in particular, how plant hormones play a role in this. In, in this. And um, he trained and worked in Japan originally, and he was a team lead at the Riken Plant Science Center in Japan, which is a fantastic institution, and then was appointed at University of Toronto in 2008. And um, he's been a very strong contributor to the PERC. He works with a strong team, Sue Abrams, Chris Phoenix, and Raju S. from Canada. And um, today he's going to talk about developing tools to visualize and modulate ABA signaling in plants. Thanks. Hi, so my name is Eiji Nambara, so from University of Toronto. First of all, so I want to say thank you to the organizer to provide me to present our work. So this is the first in-person meeting I attend after pandemic, and so this is my first flight after pandemic. So I'm very excited and so a little bit nervous to present to the audience. Today, so, so I talk about our team work so, to develop tool and method to improve water use in crops. So this is an introduction for plant hormone abscisic acid, our favorite plant hormones. So here the so left, so this is a tomato plant. So wild type and ABA deficient mutant. So this plant grow okay, but once we stop water, ABA deficient mutant wilt quickly. So wild type can stay <coughs> under drought at some level because tomato can synthesize ABA. And uh, but once we see this plant by Thermography, so every deficient mutant grow okay, but so they had a very tough life. So <coughs> continuous transpiration. Oh, thank you. And so makes surface temperature low. So every <coughs> is very important to regulate water relation in plants. So every is a plant hormone. <coughs> So it have to be synthesized and accumulated when necessary, but have to be <coughs> regulated once unnecessary. So to think local ABA concentration, so ABA transport is important. So right now there is a lot of influx and efflux transporter have been identified. These are expressed in the different tissue. But still, our understanding about ABA transport is very limited. So this is the current so our understanding of the ABA transport. And so actually, this is a map from my house to a bar we sometimes go. But so eventually, so this has to be ex explained by Google map type of thing. So here, the ABA is synthesized in this cell and diffused to the, this station. Then the so flow and sap move to the, this station, then change the train via xylem sap. Then from here, the so exported and diffused to this here. What the transporter do is here the cell synthesize ABA, there is a exporter, 
And in this station, there is an importer. <coughs> and the, so here, the so importer, exporter to change the train. And here, exporter. And in the bar, there is a <coughs> importer to get <coughs> me into the bar. So <coughs> this is the one, like, so we have a lot of transporter identified. These are importer and exporter. But the <coughs> overall, so we have very limited knowledge about the public transportation, like the so xylem flow or flow and <coughs> flow. And the, so only the so transporter change the station, <coughs> get out the house, and get into the bar. <coughs> so this is not enough. So how ABA moved? So this is the challenge. So we try to understand more. And so here, the, so we gather so different member in the so University of Saskatchewan. So there is a cyclotron, and so we try to utilize the so isotope tracer for the oh using so PET imaging. So I think so many everyone know about the PET imaging, but so briefly the so. PET imaging is a so non-disruptive method using gamma rays, so penetrating ability. And the so positron emitting isotope is based. And the so as the so cancer therapy used, the so we can get a 3D image of the small molecule distribution. And so PET imaging is a non-destructive <coughs> real-time image, and so always the so Chris emphasize the so this is the most sensitive imaging, and the so like the so this is also important. We can apply directly to the crops because related <coughs> technique like biosensors we have to make transgenic plant or reporter. <coughs> But here, the, so we have a so chemical probe directly apply to the crops and test how ABA moves. So here, the, so Chris is a so radiochemist and so imaging and so animal biology. So is a synthetic chemist, a lot of important standards. And so Raju is a crop physiologist, and so we have to maintain high quality crops. And so I joined this group for the ABA person. So this is a, this group group so provided me to use. So they synthesized this chemical with different parts. So for example, so this chemical is important to validate our image. It's true. Like so, these are so FABA we used, and so deuterated version, and so standard, and so this is a FABA catabolite, and so these are the ones so all they synthesize, and so provide me to check by mass spec for validation. Also, they provide us the so some chemical potentially regulate ABA transport or ABA an antagonist and agonist. So this is a one of the example of her agonist. So develop this, like so this is a tomato plant, so ABA and some analog applied. But after drought, so this is a so long lasting agonist, makes strong anti transpiration activity and so make plant drought tolerance. Those are the one good tool to show like so plant, so we control plant water use. And so Chris lab, so Morshed developed radiochemistry to synthesize 18F labeled ABA. So 18F is a positron emitting isotope so half-life is about 100 minutes, still reasonable, but the, so all experiments have to go quick and efficient. Next day, isotope activity become less than 10,000. All synthesis, purification, imaging have to be done in one day. So 
he developed several different syntheses, and so within this, so he can successfully <coughs> synthesize so isotope labels FABA, and so with nice purification method. <coughs> and so once so we use radioisotope label FABA and feed to plant, we can get an image. But so we are not sure this image coming from intact ABA over catabolite. So we have to make sure so after we apply to plant, how long it can stay intact FABA. So this is a one example like so after three hours of the so incubation. Then the so we extracted the so FABA. So this is the isotope count of FABA. This is a major catabolite, FPA, and some other minor catabolite. So in this experiment, so after three hours, still 80% of the FABA is intact. So we have a more time course experiment. So basically, so within the three hours of administration, so this signal are mostly coming from intact FABA. And so reflecting the localization or movement of FABA. So then the, so we applied so this fast to the Arabidopsis. So here the so I, I think you can see the so this is the applied leaf so we just dissected from here. Then so after two hours ABA signal primarily moved to the inflorescence or root. So this is the control of FDG. So this is a chemical known to move via phloem. So in this case, the so signal become clearly to the shoot, to the root, but not to the petiole. So clearly, so this is the so expected typical phloem movement once we apply the compound to the leaves. And so for the ABA, so in addition to the major move of the phloem, so there's some petiole movement coming here. But the, always the petioles move to the petiole, but seems not moving to the leaves. So we hypothesize there is a checkpoint here, like the, so, to block the AVA movement into leaves. So the, so in normal condition, the so AVA movement, the so flow and based, the so to the reproductive tissue or growing root is a primary. But the so xylem transport may be regulated by some checkpoint here. That's our first image. We are very excited about that. And so this is the one so we applied FAV to the canola seedling. This is a vegetative tissue, so there's no reproductive organ yet. So here is the site of application. So we applied FAV to the leaves, then majority going to the root. So this is the FDG application in this case. This is a site of application. FDG move to the root and some to the leaf. So here the so pattern is different. So we quantified so this pattern by mass spec using the other so label of the ABA. So in this case, again the so most applied ABA in the leaf coming to the root. So like this. So here the so FDG and so ABA pattern looks different. So we don't know the, so what the difference coming from now. So this is the other example that so ABA is applied from to the root. So we analyze root to shoot movement of FABA. So in this case, the so canola num zero so move FABA to the shoot. And once we use dehydrated plant, the so 
pattern is slightly different. So I hope you can see that so this is more <coughs> intense in the vascular tissue localized. So we are collecting these different patterns. And the, so, so lastly, the, so we get the so initial step of the micropet imaging, and this is a canola applied FABA. So we need a so, little bit more work to get nicer quantitative image. But the, so, all the FABA-based imaging are currently so, developed. So this is a summary of our work, and so FABA have to be validated as a good tracer. And so method for the autography micro pet imaging have been developed. And so Chris so tested the so AB application to the mice. So AB is also regulatory role in animals. So we are so ready to answer important biological question about AB in plant and animals. And this is a future work, and so we want to develop some agrochemical using this system. And so genotyping, you know, phenotyping the so canola cultivars. And so this is the team and so sponsors. That's it. Thank you.